Morning, everyone, and welcome to church. We're so glad that you've joined us this morning. You know, one of the wonderful things about God is that you don't need to be in a building, in a church building, to meet with Him. You know, He will meet you wherever you are. So as creative, get ready to lead us in worship. Let's dig in, let's focus our hearts, let's focus our minds, and meet in His presence together. Hello church, it's great for you to join us this morning. Why don't we just give this time to our God, amen. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb Till I met you
We have somebody giving thanks for staffing breakthrough at work. Um, and also we've got a great report that we had a great sister's evening um, on Friday night. And so many ladies were helped and encouraged. Um, and there's lots of good reports from that. So thank you, Lord. And also 
this morning, we're just going to lift our prayers um, wherever you are. Um, why don't you write in the comments box? You can just put your amen, put your prayer or praise reports in there as well as we just unite this morning. Um, we're going to pray for um, Mandy who has had a fall and has had a bad head injury. Um, so just praying for healing for that. And also she's um, believing for a bungalow. Um, we're praying for somebody with interviews coming up, um, for someone who's asking for an extension for their work contract, uh, for wisdom and career choices, so lots to do with work and jobs this morning. We're praying for somebody um, working overseas, so just for health and protection for that. Uh, we're believing for somebody um, just for comfort after um, lots of loss, family loss, um, and, and job losses as well. We're praying for somebody for a conflict um, in their family to be resolved. Um, and again, we're just going to pray for the NHS and teachers and carers and all those out there um, helping our society. So let's just lift our voices. Um, Father God, we thank you that you are listening, God. We thank you that we have a Father in heaven on the throne that we can come to. Lord, we are not without help. We are not without a Savior. And so, Lord, this morning we call on you and we just ask for help for every single situation, God. We ask that you would intervene. We ask that you would um, help people with their work situations, that you would put them on the right track, that you would give them favor and provision. Thank you, God, that you are our provider, Lord. Uh, we pray for those who need healing, physical, um, emotional, mental as well, Lord, just for your hand upon your church, on your people, Lord. Every single person that's mentioned here and, and all this situations that you know about God we lift them up to you with faith this morning Lord we pray for your good hand upon us Lord for your um, for your Holy Spirit to make a difference this morning Lord we just ask for your goodness your wisdom your strength for this church God um, and for all that we do Lord that you would just come and have your way your kingdom come God your will be done in Jesus name
Come on, let's raise it up. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it church we're going to continue with our worship now as we move on to our giving and I'm going to read that classic scripture to you from Malachi it's chapter 3 verse 10 bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this says the Lord of hosts if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it you know, church, we're exercising our faith when we rely on God's word, when we rely on that scripture, which is just as true today as it was the day that it was written. You know, when we give today, church, let's do so with faith, with hearts filled with faith, believing the promise of God, believing that what's, what I've just read to you is the truth. You know, all of the details that you need to join us with our giving will be on the screen for you now. And as we get prepared, I'm just going to pray for us. Lord, I pray that as your word says, you will open the windows of heaven over your people as we give today and pour out your blessings that there may not be room enough to contain them. Bless your people this morning, Lord. Amen. Morning church, I hope you're well, I hope you're excited, I hope you're ready for the word. Uh, I just want to encourage you, like, uh, like I did last week, to, to take ownership of this preach. Uh, my, my title is Take Ownership, uh, it was a bit of a preview last week. I just want to encourage you to, to be uncomfortable. So make sure you're not laid back, you know, in your pajamas with, with your cup of tea. Just want to encourage you, you know, to get, get up a bit. Stay, stay straight on the sofa. Don't stay light, light back, laid back. Just, just 
a bit uncomfortable, maybe pick a, a, a different chair than you normally are uh, sitting on. Just, just, just try to, if you get too comfortable, you might miss something. And I just want to encourage you to stay at the edge of your seat, not because I'm going to say something you never heard before, but because it's a sign that, you know what, I'm going to listen, I'm going to take part, I'm going to take my notes, I'm ready. You know, I mean, this is not some Netflix thing that's running in the background while I'm on my phone. I just want to encourage you to, to actively listen. You know, say amen. Uh, I, I don't hear you, but it's a sign that you, you're hearing it. You're not just listening, you're hearing it. I uh, just want to encourage you with that. And, and why don't we bow our, bow our heads wherever we are and, and pray together. God, I want to thank you for, for today. Thank you for the opportunity to, to bring uh, your word to your church. I pray that you... You help us to listen to what you want us to listen to. I hope you help us hear what you want us to hear. Uh, and I pray that you, you speak in me and through me uh, today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's, let's crack on. Uh, so as I said, let's, let's take ownership of this, not because I'm special, uh, but because you have to take responsibility for your own Christianity. And that's what all this message is about. That you are the only person responsible for your Christianity. Uh, it's, not, it's not me. I can't be a Christian for you. It's not your mother. It's not your father. It's not your pastor. They can help. They can guide. They can give advice. They can pray for you. Help you when you need it. But nobody else is responsible for your Christianity. No matter who's telling you what, it's between you and God. Uh, so the advantage to Christianity... Uh, the advantages are amazing. Uh, there's a ton of benefits to being a Christian, but like all superhero movies say, with great, with great power comes great responsibility. But before I talk about responsibility, you might not be a Christian, or you are, but maybe you forgot. Uh, if you ever heard me preach in the past, you know I have this list I found in a book. Uh, it's from a, from a Romanian worship leader and pastor. He's called Pika, and the the book is called Navigating Through Worship. And at the end of the book, uh, there's a great reminder of who we are in Christ and God's promises for us. Uh, and and I, keep, I keep hold of it. I have it. I have it easily accessible on any device. It's just there. Uh, it's my Bible in that, that paragraph of the book. Uh, I don't know how he put it together, but I'm going to read it again. And I'm going to give you Bible and verse and whoever edits this preach is going to have a big, long task to do to put all the verses on the bottom, but I think it's worth it. If you need to pause, pause, and then focus on one scripture. But I just want to remind you of the benefits of Christianity. Sometimes you forget the benefits you have. Some of them come with promises. Some of them comes with, come with responsibilities. But this is what you're getting just for being a Christian. How amazing is that? Uh, and as I read, after each of them, say amen. You know what I mean? Like, I, I take that. Yes, please. Yes, please. Think of it. I'm making you a pizza. I'm asking, do you want some cheese? Yes, please. Would you like some tomato sauce? Yes, please. Say it like that. You know what I mean? Again, make sure you're uncomfortable on your seat. Just, just ready to go. I am a child of God, John 1, 12. I am Christ's friend, John 15, 15. I have been justified, counted righteous, Romans 5, 1. I have been justified, I said that already, but whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. I have been brought up with the price. I belong to him. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. I am a member of Christ's body. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. I am a saint, a holy one. Ephesians 1, 1. I have been adopted as God's child, Ephesians 1.5. I have direct access to God through the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 2.8. I have been redeemed and forgiven of all my sins, Colossians 1.14. I am complete in Jesus Christ, Colossians 2.10. I am free from condemnation, says Romans 8.1. I am assured that all things work together for good, Roman, Romans 8.28. I am free from any condemnation charged, charges against me, Romans 8.31. Nothing can separate me from God's love, Romans 8.35. Don't forget your amens, church. 
I'm established, anointed, anointed and sealed by God. 2 Corinthians 1.21. I am hidden with Christ in God. Colossians 3.3. 3. I am confident that God works. I am confident that the good work that God has begun in me will be perfected. Philippians 1.16. I am a citizen of heaven. Philippians 3.20. I do not have a spirit of fear, but love, power, and sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 I can find grace and mercy in time of need. Hebrews 4.16 I am born of God, and the evil one cannot touch me. 1 John 5.18 I am salt and light of the earth. Matthew 5.13 Keep saying, church, amen. Take ownership of each of them. I am a branch of the true vine, a channel of his life. John 15, 1 and 5. I have been chosen and appointed to bear fruit. John 15, 16. I am a personal witness for Christ. Acts 1, 8. I am God's temple. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. I am a minister of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I am God's co-worker, 2 Corinthians 6.1. I am seated with Christ in the heavenly realm, Ephesians 2.6. I am God's workmanship, Ephesians 2.10. I may approach God with freedom and confidence, man. That was Ephesians 3.12. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Philippians 4.13. Amen. You know... I said it before, each one of them are so, so powerful. I'd be happy with one of them, but just for being a Christian, I'm all of them. And I, I encourage you to remind yourself that, who you are, what are your benefits for being a Christian? What do you get? It's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Now that we, we talked about benefits, this, this preach is not about the benefits, but now that you know them, let's talk a bit about responsibilities. And Unlike responsibilities, I'm not going to give you the list. You know, pray for others, pray for yourself, read your Bible, give offering, all this responsibility. I'm not going to go through a list of things to do, things not to do. That's, that's not my style. That's not, my, that's not my, 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 my purpose for this preach today. What I want to encourage you is talk about just one responsibility, like in the instruction, which is to take ownership of your faith. Right? I'm not a Christian because other people are. I'm not a Christian because it's cool. If anything, in this day and age, it's not cool to be a Christian. Um, never really was. Uh, I'm not a Christian because my parents are a Christian. You know, it's, it's my own fate. Yeah, it just happened that, that my parents are Christians, but that's not why I'm Christian. I made my own decision. I made my own covenant with, with God. I, I got baptized myself. Uh, and I'm not a Christian just because the music is amazing here, which, which definitely is. I'm a Christian because that's what I want. It's my decision, my commitment, my relationship with God. It's my own. And I think it's very important in Christianity not to get lost in numbers. Point one, don't get lost in numbers. And what I mean by that is in, in, in our daily lives, numbers are very, very important. Some of them are a bit trivial. You know how many likes you have on social media, how many followers, things like that, but there's good numbers, how much money you have in your account, how many children you have, you know, that's a good number to keep track of, it's, 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 numbers are not wrong, uh, there's lovely number, how many clients you have if you're a company, what's your bottom line, uh, all, all these things, numbers, numbers are great, useful and good, but Christianity is not necessarily about numbers, right, God uh, Jesus so loved the world that he came and died for the world. But the relationship he's building is with you and me, not with us. And, and there's a, bit, a very slight difference in that, that, that sometimes we forget. You know, God didn't, you know, we're not worshiping on Sunday just as a church. We're worshiping, we're worshiping as individuals that are part of the church, right? So, for example, I have my own relationship with God. My wife has her own relationship with God. I believe as my children are going to grow up, they're going to develop their own relationship with God. And together as a family, we're going to worship God. But as a result of the four people worshiping God. Me, my family, together with another family, 
we're going to worship God. But again, me, every member of my family, every member of that family are responsible for their individual faith. Christianity is personal. It's about you and him. It's about me and him. It just happens that we do life together. Think of a co company, uh, uh, Amazon. Amazon uh, has about 600,000 employees, right? Great number. Now, how many of them people would have a relationship with their CEO, Jeff Bezos? Right, maybe five? You know, the small board, maybe ten? I'm talking about personal relationship. I'm not talking about, yeah, I work with him. Right? There are people in the organization that will never, ever even meet their CEO. Right? And that's fine. But Christianity is not like that. You know what I mean? Just because... Just because I work directly with Pastor Aaron and he's amazing and his relationship with God is, is the best ever and he knows him personally and they hang out, doesn't mean I know God, right? That's my responsibility, right? If I'm friends or if I work, if my manager works under Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon, doesn't mean I know Jeff Bezos. Do you, see, do you understand that it's, it's about personal relationship? It, it's nothing, it doesn't matter what other people are doing. And, and that's why... The Bible is full of people that are warm because they're not hot, they're not cold, they're not with God, they're not against God, they're just somewhere in there. They just mingle, they just hang out. I just want to remind you that Christianity is an individual thing, right? And I'm, again, I'm not talking about this in a selfish way. Right? We're not called to do life alone, but we're called to have our own personal relationship. Christianity is you and him. Revelation 3.20 Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anybody hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. Now, I believe that eating together is one of the most intim intimate things we can do with, with friends, with, with parents, with family. And th this, the reason he's saying I'll eat with you and you with me is because, I don't know if you ever went to a wedding that you're not family, you're friends, but you're not close friends. You just, you just made it through the door. You know, that, that, that type of wedding. You're just there. And you're eating with the bride and groom, but the bride and groom are not eating with you. Right? Maybe you're at level 27, just next to the toilet. The music is a bit quiet, and you don't really hear anything, but you're there. You, you, you got the right food, but you're not hanging out. It's that kind of relationship. This isn't that. This is you saying, can you pass me the bread? Yeah, here's some bread. It's that relationship. You dine with him. You dine with me. Tell me a joke. It's that kind of relationship, right? It's that kind of dining table. That's a personal relationship. That's not, that's not your part of the wedding type thing. That's you sit at the table. James 4, 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. By drawing near, it talks about a personal, personal relationship. Zephariah 3, 17 the Lord, church, just, just, this, is, this is a mind-blowing verse. Just, just listen to this. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save you. And listen to this, if this doesn't sound like a relationship to you. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. And wait for it. He will exalt over you with loud singing. He will sing over you. He's that excited to be with you. He will, he will sing over you. I mean, this is, this is a personal relationship. This is like a dad that's proud. You know, that, that uh, your son just scored the first goal of his career, and he goes, yeah, and then he shouts, and he gets excited and, and starts saying, oh, 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 you know, how dads go and, and try to cheer for their son. It's that kind of love, that kind of relationship, right? They, they, he rejoices over you. And... and the, the Christianity is all about relationship. And we say this, it, it's now a buzzword, you know, uh, it's not about religion, it's about relationship. But that relationship has to be personal. God doesn't have a relationship with your family, He has a relationship with you who happens to be part of your family. You are important. You are important. My number two point, you are important. Now, it, it became very trendy to hate ourselves. And, and what I mean by that is it's a very awkward and uncomfortable for us to appreciate ourselves, right? I can't say anymore, I look great today. I look beautiful, right? 
Look at my hair. It looks amazing. I have a great job. I love my family. We're the best family there ever was. Right? If I say that, I'll be called arrogant and silly and inappropriate and stay in your lane and Jesus preached humility. And, and it's all, it's very, very natural to hate ourselves. But I'm not saying all them things through my abilities. I'm saying all them things through the mirror that God put at the beginning of my preach about who I am in Him. Right? It, 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 it's... I don't, mean it, I don't mean this in a millennial type of way, you know, we're, we're the most important and the whole universe revolves around me. I don't mean it like that. I mean it that I'm God's son and God has a plan for me. And that's what he's telling me and that's what I'm going to believe him. And he has a plan for you. And whoever tells you otherwise is, 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 is wrong because they're contradicting the Bible. He has a specific plan for you in your life and you're loved and you're wanted and you're important. And if anybody has a problem with that, let's talk. And I remember when I was a child, there was this song. I grew up, when I was quite young, I grew up in a very, very traditional church. But there was this song there that I didn't like. It was, it, it, it was, it was inspired from Psalms. So it's, it's Psalm 22, verse 6. But I am a worm, not a man, scorned by everybody, despised by people. Now, People took this verse and made it into a song, and they were singing and bragging about how they're just a worm. And that's fine if you, if you on the chorus explain that you were a worm before you knew God, but through him you're strong, you're powerful, you can change the world because that's what he wanted you to do. But the song never got to that point. It was just, I'm a worm and I'm a nobody. God is great, I'm nobody. And that's a horrible way to live your life. You're the son of the king. You're the son of the king of kings. You're the daughter of the king of kings and lords of lords. And you live like a worm? That's not right. Surely that's not right. And I'm so glad that I did more reading. I didn't stop there. You know, Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declared the Lord, plan to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope, and the future, that doesn't sound like a worm to me. Jeremiah 1, 5. Before I, before I formed you in your womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you, which means put you aside. I appointed you a prophet to the nation. Psalm 32, verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you. With my eyes upon you. That sounds like someone that wants to be involved. It doesn't sound like someone that... I had my 30 people here that I like, and we're just one of the 30, 31, you know, 31st. I don't need you. I have to go. It's, it's, it's a personal relationship where everybody is just as important. Because it's not about the numbers. It's about the one. It's about you. My third point is very similar to the second one. So the second one was you are important, but my third one, you are underestimating your importance and rely on others. We're underestimating, underestimating it, our own importance and we rely on others to do something. Now, this is a bit confusing and it's a bit of a weird third point. But here's, here's my explanation. The problem with God's plan for you is that it's usually too simple. It takes obedience and it takes faith, but it's usually simple. Now, some people are called to do crazy, crazy, crazy stuff, and they do it, and it's amazing. But some of us can't even do the small things. And I mean, we all want to be, God, I want to preach, and when I preach, people that are just not even hearing me, they just... They just see a video of me preaching. They collapse and then they get healed. You know, we all want to be, to be that person. We all want, when we walk through a room, we just do that. And then people get healed and they get transformed and the life renewed. We want to be that person. We want to be not walking on water. We want to run on water, you know, backwards. We want to mukwak on water. We all want that. But nobody wants to do the little, small things. You know what I mean? Love your family. It sounds easy. How many people grow up without a loving father if it's that easy? You know what I mean? 
love your neighbor as yourself. It's very easy. It's, it's not hard. It just takes humility. They do bad things. You still take their bin inside. That takes humility. Why would I have to suffer? Why do I have to go in the rain and take their bins in? We sometimes don't do little small things, but we just want the big. We just want the big things. I have a real question, church, a very real question. Family time, okay? If you're not family, just cover your ears. If you wouldn't have done what you did for God's church, right? If everything you, would have, you, you did for church would disappear, would, would have never happened, what would be different? Right? If you wouldn't have done anything for God's church, is there any difference? Would the church look any different? Is the church better because of it? And I don't mean NGC. I mean church with a capital C. Some of us are called to full-time ministry. Some of, us, some of us aren't. But what would have happened to God's church if you wouldn't have done anything? Is, is there any difference at all? Would anybody notice? And, and please don't take this as condemnation. Take this as stirring you up. Stir you up. And here's the problem. I, when, when we did the 21st day of fasting and prayer, I, I covered this, this verse in, in my, you know, on the last day. But this is a shocking verse. Ezekiel 22, verse 30. I have looked for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap of the land so I would not have to destroy it. But I found no one. Church, out of all of them, there wasn't even one man. And when, when I think of a gap, I, I, I remember when I first read it, I was a child. Again, I grew up in church, and I, I was thinking, this gap must be a, a specific shape, a specific form, and then that person that fits in that gap wasn't there. Who is this person that needs to stay in the gap? Is it the pastor? Is it the boss? Is it an elderly person with more, more experience and more life with Jesus? Is it a young person that's strong and powerful? Who is this person? And God literally said, anyone? I'm looking for anyone at this point. I'll take anyone. And there wasn't anybody willing to stand for, it, for, it, for the land. Right, church? So in, in, in many, many occasions, this is how I imagined church. And the gap. I took this, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but I took this from my, from my son, Noah, and he has these puzzles he has to put in, and they, they all have to go in the right place. So I imagined that when God shouted, is there anyone to stay in the gap? I was like, well, surely it's not me, because uh, this is me, and I don't fit in the gap. I'm not perfect. Maybe I'm too young for now. Maybe I'm just a teenager. Maybe I'm not married yet. Maybe I don't have any kids yet. Maybe I didn't finish college yet. Maybe after I finish uni, I'm not married. I'm too old now. Maybe he wants... I literally look for the right person. And in many, 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 many occasions, I hear this all the time. You know what I mean? Uh, I hear this all the time. Well, I'm, I'm just praying to see what God wants me to do. And... and and I'm not going to do anything until God tells me what I need to do. And I'm, I'm waiting for God to tell me where this is the train shape and this is the calling. And there you go. You fit perfectly in. And now you, meet, you, you met your calling. You know what I mean? You, you fit exactly where you need to fit as a perfectly shaped. But God was looking for anyone and nobody was willing to volunteer. Nobody was willing to volunteer. The, the problem sometimes in Christianity is we think too big. And what I mean by that is if I'm in a group, on a WhatsApp group or Signal group these days or whatever group you're in, if I ask, hey, guys, let's say there are 100 people there. Hey, guys, I'm moving house tomorrow. Is there anyone that can help me? Right? Ignore lockdowns, ignore the virus just five years ago. It's very unlikely that lots of people are going to say yes. Not because they don't care, not because they don't want but most of them will assume that somebody else will say yes, right? I have a thing on that day, but hopefully that person doesn't have a thing. Uh, but I can reschedule, but they're probably free anyway, so somebody else will do it. And I think that's exactly what happened in, with Ezekiel. Someone else said that someone else would pray for the land, would stay in the gap, would, would take ownership of it. 
as a need to be made. However, if I ask direct to people, hey, would you help me move? Most people would say yes, or if they have something, they would tell me and it will be fine. But most, it, it's a different thing. And lots of us are waiting to be asked directly, hey, can you? But that's not about taking ownership of it. That's not about being a partner with God. You know, if God makes a thunder and the, and the thunder is in the form of my name, you know, just Joe, and the lightning perfectly, you know, it says Joe, then I'm going to listen and I'm going to do whatever he wants me to do. You know what I mean? I need to be asked personally. I'm not going to take ownership of anything unless God tells me by name, Joe, on Sunday, the 14th of March, can you do that? On the 23rd, do that. You know, I, I, I'm going to encourage your church not, to, not, not, not to, to passively wait, to actively wait. Even if you don't know your calling, even if you don't know what God wants you to do, there's things that you know you can do and take ownership of it. I want to encourage you, a, a great tip I learned a few years ago is when I read the Bible, to swap their name with my name, you know, to make it about me. And God said to Joe, not God said to Moses. And then think, what would I do? Because you look at the Bible and you think, oh, well, I would have done that. I would have never denied Jesus. Oh, if I was with Jesus for three years, I would have not have done that. Oh, if I was Noah, I would have built the boat. Would we? A very similar example happened with Abraham. Uh, everybody knows the story of Sodoma and Gomorrah. You know, it, 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 uh, it was full of sin and God, God needed to get rid of it. Uh, I was going to read everything, but it might be a bit too long, but it's in, it's in Genesis 18. And uh, Abraham said, if there's 50 people, God, will you spare them? He said, yes. And then what about 45? And what about 40? And he went all the way down to 10. Because all it needed is, it's a lot of family. But I look, nobody quite knows how many people lived, lived in, in Sodoma and Gomorrah. Maybe between, some people say 10,000, some people say 600,000, some people say a million. But for other time, it doesn't quite sound right. But, but let's say, let's say 50,000 people. Right? Out of 50,000 people, 10. Surely 10. Right? Uh, I'm recording this in Acliffe. About 26,000 people, 20,000 people in Acliffe, right? 10 people. Do you think there's 10 people in, in uh, Acliffe that are righteous? And, and here, here's the thing with, with ownership. You can think, well, Pastor Aaron lives in Acliffe, so that's two. And then someone else I know, that's one. But, but can you say, I live in Acliffe, I'll, I'll do that. You know, in Darlington, there are about 100,000 people. Are you one of the 10? Right? God made you righteous. So technically, yes, you are. But I know I'm righteous because Bible, I know I'm righteous because the Bible tells me I'm righteous and I'm righteous through God. But if I don't know the Bible and someone asks, are you righteous? I say, well, I'm also a saint. Have you know I'm Saint Joe? Please call me Saint Joe from now on. And I know that sounds arrogant and that's my point. But I take ownership what God's telling me I am. Because the word of God is God's let, love letter to me. It just happens that it's also to you. But it's God's letter to me. And I take ownership of what he tells me. However, this day and age where well, we have maybe five people in our families tend to be, the families got a bit smaller, less, less children. It's two families. They couldn't find two families. Obviously, they were hoping Lot's family with their spouses would have covered it. It didn't. They want two families there. Are you one of the ten? Church, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting close to finishing. So I, I, it is a tough message. I, I changed it hundreds of times already. It's been sitting with me for a few months. But I want you to know that this is not a condemnation. This is not, hey, you do that. I'm watching you. If you don't do that, lightning would come in your house. It's not that. It's just a stirring up. You know what I mean? In this pandemic, it's very easy to sit down, you know, to just let others do it. Well... I'm vulnerable. I have to shield. I can't do anything. I'm just going to sit down and do nothing. Well, you can become the prayer giant that you are in this pandemic. You know what I mean? You can say, you know, I can't leave the house. 
but there's not a single person on that screen I'm not going to pray for. There's not a single person in my connect group that I'm going to pray over them so much their ears are going to explode. You know I mean, you can become a prayer giant and it takes nothing for you to do so. Just time and energy and commitment and ownership. You know what I mean? It, it, it's easy to say, well, God didn't call me to pray. I did, didn't call me to be a praying giant. How do you know? Have you tried it? You know I mean, it, that's the problem. These things are easy. And, and I just want to encourage you to, to, to stir us up. I'm trying to stir myself up with this preach. So I take more ownership of it. It's easy to say, well, I did my part because I tied, so I'm letting other people volunteer their time, and then other people are going to do the praying. And why? why can't you be that person that's fully committed to God? We're going to take communion in a while, which is just a fantastic thing. But before that, I just want to encourage you, if you don't know God, if you don't have a personal relationship with God, if you want to have all the benefits, And as I'm going again through the list, because this list, church, needs to be printed on your heart. I'll go again. I just want you to consider. We're going to pray together to give your life to Jesus, for you to be part of it, for you to access all these benefits. Right? You can be a child of God, Christ's friend. You can be justified, united with the Lord. You can belong to Him. You can be a member of, bad, bad, uh, of Christ's body. You can be a saint, a holy one. You can be adopted as God's child. You can be redeemed and forgiven. You can be complete, free of condemnation. All things are going to work together for you. Nothing can separate you from God's love. You are established, anointed. You can be sealed. You can be hidden with Christ. You will be perfected. You will be a citizen of heaven. You will not have a spirit of fear, even in the middle of a pandemic, but you will be loved, you will be powerful, and you will have a sound mind. You will find grace and mercy. You will be born of God. You will be the soul, the light of the earth. You will be a branch of the true wine. You will be chosen and appointed. You will be a personal witness for Christ. You will be God's temple. You will be a minister of reconciliation. You will be God's co-worker. You will be seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. You will be God's workmanship. You may approach God with freedom and confidence. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. If this is something you want to be involved in, I just want to encourage you to just say I am or lift up your hand. Just do something, you know, get up of your sofa. If you don't have a relationship, just just do an act of faith. You know, you can be clap your hand one or snap your finger, just something physical. Kind of tell yourself, this I want, I want that. I want that too for me. I want that too for my family. Let's pray together. And if this is you, just repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. I receive you as my Lord. I've done enough running. I did enough hiding. I want you in my life. I want the benefits of Christianity. I want to love you and serve you for the rest of my life. Amen. If that's you, let us know. You know, in the, in the, in the descriptions, there will be an email address. Just let us know. Let's pray together. Let's do life together. You do your own relationship with God. I'll do my own. But together, we can build each other up. We can strengthen each other. More than happy to pray with you and for you. We can meet online social distance but let's let's uh, let's do communion now no commute communion is, it symbolizes God's sacrifice for us and through this sacrifice is that we can have all the benefits I read you know you can't have one without the other so as you take this just take it as a reminder not just for not just for everything that God did for you but everything that you are in him and through him as a result of this God as we take this bread the cracker the we pray that you, you bless it. We pray that, that you strengthen us through it, although it's just a symbol. We thank you for what you did in us, through us, for us. We thank you for everything that you, you told us that we can be. We thank you for the confidence in your Bible. We thank you for the confidence in what you did for us. We thank you that we are forgiven and we can freely access God's throne. 
Let's eat church. God, through this cup, I want to thank you for, for your blessings. I want to thank you for the ultimate sacrifice. I just pray that you help me, you help us to take ownership of our relationship with you. As we drink from this, we want to remember what you did. I want to thank you. I want to bless you. Amen, church. I hope that blessed you. I hope that encouraged you. I hope you got stirred up. I hope you're going with the plan. I hope you're not living the same. We love you, and let us know if we can help. Take care, church. Bye-bye. Thank you for that amazing word, Joe. You were fantastic as always. Now, for all of you young families out there, we've got Kids Church, so stay online for that. And then coming up later on in the week, we have our Connect Groups on Tuesday and Wednesday. But let me challenge you, church. Don't wait till then to get in touch. Text each other, call each other, and most importantly, keep praying for each other. We're praying for you. Have a fantastic week. You take with the enemy men for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take with the enemy men for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Come on, church, let's sing it out. You take what the enemy